Hi guys, Kotutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you have already seen how to implement a register functionality where you basically open a register dialog box, click on the register button and you will get a registration success. To do that, you basically created a custom JSON request class and you created the enumerated data type called as register and in that you created a custom request handling where you overwrite certain methods. In this case, it is parse network response and parse network error and in parse network response, you basically convert whatever the response that you were getting into a proper Java object. But however, as you recall, this is not the only functionality that we have have in our application other than registration uh, there is login and then get to do list all those things once again it pretty much remains same only the difference is inside get json request we will have to write the code for the multiple cases we will have to declare multiple enumerated data types here other than register for example login get to do those kind of stuff and then construct the appropriate parameters and then construct the json request return that particular json request so i am sure you would be wondering how this modified updated json request would look like if i add the complete code that is pretty simple i have already written the code i will just change the branch in the jit so i have this thing called as with refactored volley and now if you go back to the code you will observe that now i have multiple enumerated data types and inside the get json request i have written the code for multiple request types in case of get to do's it would be a get request in case of modify it would be a put request and in case of login it would be a once again a post request the urls would be slightly different and in some case i have to get hold of the token and pass the token as a part of the request so pretty much whatever that you need to do to construct http request properly that is what goes on in this get json request and depending upon what is the request type that you are sending pretty much everything gets decided here and nothing else changes your parse network response pretty much remains same we have not done any modifications here so just to make sure that everything is working fine let me run this particular code and see what happens so let me enter the password click on login and as you can see here we are getting the values and just to be sure from the postman collection also we are getting the same values and i can remove an existing one now values are matching if i want to modify just testing modify and click on the modify button you should get a updated modified and I have updated delete functionality here. Earlier, we used to send request body as a part of the delete functionality. This is little bit difficult to implement using Wally. So we will go back to the classical way of deleting wherein we send the ID that needs to be deleted as a part of the request URL. But to understand to which particular user it needs to be deleted, now I am involving the token as a part of the request. So that is why if you have a look at the code, now you will observe that in delete to do, I am sending get to be deleted to do ID which actually is a id of the item that needs to be deleted and i am also sending the token value and if you go back to home activity you see a structure here i have a add to do item which invokes json request and then remove to do item which once again invokes the json request for deletion modify once again involves json request and get to do items so handling of your json request is becoming much more easier and more efficient all you have to do is construct the json request and add it to the request queue it will run in the request queue and get you back the response i am sure that you are wondering can i actually see the order in which these requests are being handled so that is pretty easy to do 
there is a, a method called as add marker which you have to override in the json request so let me write add marker and as you can see here the argument is a tag which kind of give you an information what kind of operation is going on at that particular moment in time so what i will do is let me create a tag here private static tag let me create private instance of request type let me call it as current request type and let me have a setter method and i will use this method to set the current request type to whatever the request that I am receiving here as a part of the argument. Now, basically, then I will use that to log the tag, log.i tag, and then current request type, and then tag. And now, let us run this particular code and see what happens. And pay attention to the log cat, because that is where all our operations would be visible. So, let me click on the register. As you can click here, the register operation basically got started with adding to the queue and then a cache queue take, then cache hit expired because we are not simply using any kind of a caching here. And then a network queue is taken up, a network HTTP complete happens network parse completion happens and then the network response is written to the cache and then the response is handed back that is post response is the last operation that we will see now let me try to do a login as you can see here once again every time we are following the same pattern in terms of the operations that we are doing if i try to do a, another add to do operation here let me write test to do value and place is from this and click on add as you can see here now we are having a add to do operation and once again it is going through a network operation so let's try to change the orientation of the screen here when I change the orientation of the screen, once again, the activity gets recreated and once again, get to do is getting invoked, which will hit the network operation and get the all to do items from the remote server. If I move my device to portrait, once again, another get to do operation is getting triggered. If you think in terms of how many number of times this happens, it is happening every time you change the orientation of the screen. If you try to put it in a nutshell, whenever we do add, delete, modify, the data is being fetched over a network, which is fine because it makes sense to do a fresh network fetch after the data has been modified. However, the screen orientation change is not going to modify the data, but currently it is still triggering a network fetch whenever the screen orientation changes. This needs to be addressed. The better approach would be to fetch the data from the cache whenever the screen orientation changes, especially when we are sure that the data is not yet updated. And that is where the importance of caching comes into picture. So in the next video, we will have a look at how to selectively cache the volley request. So stay tuned for that video. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.